This is our fifth time looking at Philippians 1, 20 to 26, and I think it'll be the last in this series. And here's the question I want to ask. If God has promised with absolute certainty that you are going to make it home to heaven, are means to get there necessary? If the promise is absolutely sure that you will make it home complete, are the human beings that God has appointed to get you there necessary? Father, I ask for clarity on this question because if we are in a cavalier way indifferent to the means that you've appointed to get us home and instead bank on the promise that we're going to get home without any attention to the means to get there, I think we are deceiving ourselves. And I pray that you would make that clear in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read this, and I'll show you where I'm getting that question. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage now as always Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Fruitful labor. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary. On your account, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me, you, in me, you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. So, Paul looks at his dying and going to be with Christ, and he compares it to his staying and continuing and coming to them for their progress and joy in the faith, and he says, all right, this is more necessary. How necessary? Back in chapter 1, verse 6, He had said, I am sure, sure, confident of this, that he, God, who began a good work, a good work of new birth, regeneration, the beginnings of sanctification, a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. It's going to happen. It will be done. So how necessary is this? How, how How can Paul's labor and Paul's remaining and Paul's continuing and Paul's coming and Paul's working for their progress and joy in the faith be so necessary if he is absolutely sure that they're going to be completed at the day of Christ. Why not just not do all that work? They're going to make it anyway. Just a few verses later, three verses later in chapter one, he's not ignoring the means he's acting one of them, namely prayer. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge, your love abounding with knowledge, abounding with discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, be pure, be blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruits of righteousness that come through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. If that's not a completion of this good work. I don't know what it is. I have begun a baby work in you. You are born again, or God has. God has begun this great work of regeneration. He's going to complete it. And so I am praying that it would be completed in all these ways. So prayer appears to be a very important means of getting us to the place God promised we will be. And I think that's the same thing that's going on here. It is more necessary that I pour out my labor, more necessary that I remain in the flesh, more necessary that I continue with you, more necessary that I come to you, more necessary that I work for your progress and your joy and faith, because if you aren't progressing, you're going backwards. And if you're not rejoicing, you're dying. 
And if you don't go forward and persevere, persevere to the end in faith, you're going to be lost. You're going to show that all of this was like that soil where the flower just sprang up in Jesus' parable with joy. And when the sun came out, it just died because there was no reality in it. And I don't want you to prove to be unreal. So I'm I'm going to act what I believe to be more necessary and continue and labor and come and for your progress and joy work. So I'm arguing that Paul's prayer and his labor are necessary means of the fulfillment of this promise in chapter 1, verse 6. And here are two glimpses of this principle. Chapter 2, verse 12. Beloved, as you've always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation, effect it, bring it about, act your salvation with fear and trembling, because God is the one who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So God's absolutely certain intention to bring it out doesn't bring it about, doesn't nullify your working it out, your availing yourselves of the means of grace. It doesn't nullify this. It, it argues for it. It's the ground of it. Same thing in 312. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. I haven't gotten there yet. I know God's going to bring me there. But I press on. I use all the means available to me. I press on to make it my own because that's the same as this, this ground clause right there in chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Because Christ has made me his own. I'm going to press on to make him my own because he has already made me his own. So here's my conclusion. Means of grace are necessary. Perseverance to glory is certain for God's people. How can both of those be true? Human means, which seem so fickle at times, are necessary to get there. And perseverance that you're going to get there is certain. How can that be? That can be because God is just as sovereign over means as over ends. If God has said, I'm going to get you there, you're going to make it, I'm going to complete the good work I began in you, and he says, and it is necessary that you avail yourself of the means of grace, like the labor of pastors to minister to you and and they're continuing with you and they're working for your progress and joy in the faith and they're coming to you again as a means to your end and that is all necessary. The reason the end is sure and the means are necessary is because God is just as sovereign to make those means happen in the life of his people as to make those ends happen. So let us never argue from a certain end to the optional means, but rather from the certain ends to the necessary means and the sure means. And let's become part of those for each other.